From its earliest days, Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, has preserved the history of our frontiers. Many are the tales and legends, but the true accounts remain for all time in the national archives of our country. Here are recorded the triumphs and failures of the pioneers who created a new and rugged empire, the documents that tell of the dangers and problems of frontier life, and of the American Indian who so fiercely resisted the westward push of civilization. Of these, the Apache tribes of Arizona were the last to defy the white man, and no one has told the final chapter of that struggle better than a man who helped make its history, Captain Case McLeod of the United States Cavalry. In 1885, the uneasy peace which had existed in this region was again threatened. Geronimo, the great Apache chief, had broken from the San Carlos Reservation. Between him and a new general uprising rode one small unit of fighting men, K Troop of the 5th, with Captain McLeod himself in command. Them devils, them low-born murdering devils. First time you've seen the handiwork of the Apache, Mr. Woodley, but it won't be your last. No, sir. What do you think, Sergeant? Captain, what I'm thinking would make the devil blush. But there's one thing for sure. Them tracks there ain't over a couple of hours old. The trail leads off in that direction. Snake Canyon. That's right. Sergeant? Yes, sir? Empty the wagon and pack it with the ten best shots in the troop. Carbines, pistols, and 30 rounds. Yes, sir. Mr. Whitley, take Sergeant Clancy and two troopers as mounted escort for the wagon. Yes, sir. You'll proceed through Snake Canyon. If attacked, you'll make a stand and hold there until we get there. A regular Trojan horse, sir. Yes, Mr. Whitley. And its success depends on your giving me enough time to get the troop in position before you enter the canyon. Get the detail ready. Yes, sir. <laughs> our wagon. Now if they'll only take the bait. Geronimo, Captain. Geronimo will never be caught this easily. There's the one I was after. Boy with a jacket on. Geronimo's son. Bring him up here. That I will, Captain. Get down. Get down, I said. Go to the captain. Go to the captain. Take that cavalry jacket off of it. Why, you little devil, you. Your name's Tuba, isn't it? 
Your father's going to be awfully disappointed in you, sticking your neck in a noose like this. It was my first war path. Next time I do better. There won't be any next time. Where'd you learn to speak English? During last peacetime, I go to missionary school. Learn to fight white man better. A chip off the old block, sir. Lieutenant Baker, you'll remain here with the main body of troops in charge of these Indians. Yes, sir. Mr. Whitley, Sergeant Keown Ramirez, you'll come with me. Yes, sir, yes, too, sir. On a little excursion, Mr. Whitley, which should add considerably to your frontier education. Put him on my horse. Geronimo, that Tobiah will not be harmed. He will listen to a message I bring from General Crook. Que no tocarán a Tobiah si escucha el mensaje que el Capitán McLeod trae del General Crook. El militar tiene la misma malicia Apache que mi hijo. A horse soldier fights with more Apache cunning than my own son. Muchas gracias. General Crook is grieved that you have broken the faith between you. He asks that you return to your reservation in peace. General Crook siente mucho que hayan roto el pacto mutuo. Me ordena que les mande a su territorio y que vayan en paz. No fuimos nosotros los que los rompimos. De acuerdo con el último tratado, toda esta región era nuestro lugar de casa. Ahora ha vuelto el hombre blanco en busca de oro, matando a nuestros cazadores y robando nuestro ganado. Was I the one who broke the good faith between us? By the last treaty, all of this was a hunting grounds. Now the white man has come back again, seeking the yellow metal, shooting down our hunters and stealing our cattle. Lay down your weapons and return to your reservation. And I promise that I'll drive all the gold seekers from the mountains and never let them return. Entreguen sus armas y vuelvan a su reservación. Les prometo echar a los intrusos de las montañas para siempre. No regresaremos hasta que no cumpla su promesa. We will not go back until that promise is fulfilled. Then I go keep what I have promised. Entonces voy a cumplir lo prometido. Primero que suelte a mi hijo Tubai. Before you go, you must free my son Tubai. Tubai's life protects our own. Tubai will ride with us. Él irá con nosotros. El militar podría demostrar su buena fe ahora. The horse soldier must show his faith now. Glory be, Captain. We don't dare let the boy loose now. We, we have to trust him, sir. You're learning fast, Lieutenant. Matenlos! Matenlos! Mi palabra es ley! No se os hará daño. Sí. Yo sabré si cumplís con vuestro deber. Go. I'll know if the promise is kept. Yes, and the governor's going to hear about this, you ten-plate soldier. I don't care if you tell the president. Now you pack up and get out. Now, wait a minute, man. Quiet down. Nothing to get excited about. Nothing to get excited about? Why, Mr. Alsop, it's just the same as if a fella stuck you up and robbed you at the point of a gun. So you were run out of the mountains. That doesn't mean you're going to stay out permanently. But I was getting so close to that mother load, I could smell it. Why, well, there's a gold vein in that mine that's going to make me a rich man someday. Now, look at it this way. The gold's still up there in the ground. Nobody's going to steal it. Why, well, my company stands to lose more than all of you put together, but I'm not squawking. Yeah, but what about us? Don't you worry either. I'll look into it and see if there isn't some honest way to protect our interests. Why don't you go over to my place and have a drink and cool down? 
Tell Ed it's on the house. Well, all right. Only hope them engines gets the highs from sitting on top of all that gold. <laughs> Come on, man. At least we'll get a drink out of this. Come inside. You may have satisfied the miners, but I ain't satisfied. Simmer down, Cliff. You're as bad as they are. I put every cent of my profit from the Tucson house in those mines. You won't lose. Well, what are we going to do? Enlist an army of our own, take on the whole U.S. cavalry? I said settle down, Cliff. Don't tell me what to do. I am telling you. When we formed this little company, it was agreed I should make the decisions. You men contributed money and muscle. I know mining. And let us say I am blessed with certain business acumen. Yeah, what's that? In this case, brains. Chief Geronimo, here on the paper that speaks, it is written that the Galerno Mountains and Valleys shall belong to your people. Quien este papel está escrito que las montañas y los valles pertenecen a vuestra gente. As long as you keep this treaty, my troops will guard your reservation against the gold seekers and hunters. Mientras ustedes continúen con el pacto, el ejército guardará su reservación y vuestro territorio. Y mientras el hombre blanco cumpla con su palabra, Jerónimo cumplirá con la suya. As long as the white man keeps the word, Jerónimo will keep his. The general will pardon me, sir. There's still a warrior who has not yet surrendered a gun, but he wishes to do so now. Sergeant, if I find the knuckle-headed trooper that let his gun be stolen, I'll eat his ears off. Start eating. Uh, well, General, the Commissioner of Indian Affairs will be happy to know the trouble's finally over. I hope it is over. You don't think so? Maybe. If Geronimo doesn't find some new excuse to make him start raiding again. Apaches can only keep peace for so long, Mr. Clemson. War is their religion. It's hard to keep them put. They'll stay put this time, because I've decided that you're the man to keep them on the reservation. With only one troop, sir? Four troops. You're the new squadron commander. Major Kirby's being transferred to Wyoming. You're in complete charge here while I report to Washington. And I'm taking with me a recommendation for your promotion to major. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Please come back, honey. Oh, come on. All right, sweetheart. Case. Hello, Norma. I was not talking to you. This crazy kitten was upsetting everything. <laughs> Outside, Buster. Go on. Welcome back, Captain. After six weeks, I was beginning to worry. Were you? Yes, and also about Lieutenants Whitley and Baker and Sergeants Keogh and Clancy and all the rest of them. Trumpeter, the sound the retreat. We're outnumbered ten to one. I haven't congratulated you on getting Geronimo to surrender. Yes, I'm just a little dove of peace. I wish now I never found a fiend. Why? Well, you'd have to stay here at the fort instead of going back to the reservation. Oh, I think I'll be glad to get away from cavalry officers for a change. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's this? McGuffey's first reader. Oh, I guess you haven't heard. I'm going to open a school for Indian children when Dad and I go back to the reservation. Yeah? Why? Why? That's kind of a, a silly question, isn't it? So you teach him how to read and write and speak English, then what? It might occur to you that in time, education might succeed with the Indians where the force of arms has failed, Captain. There's nothing as successful as a bullet between the eyes of an Apache to make him peaceful. So you'd rather shoot them? Sure. If it'll prevent me and my men from getting shot first, I won't ask you to agree with me, but Case, if we can teach the Indian to think as we do, show him that he can gain more by being peaceful than by fighting, then, then there won't be any more Indian wars. We want them to have the same opportunity as anyone else to become useful citizens, but in order to do that, they must first be well, taught. you get all wound up like this, how long does it take you to run down? Sometimes I go on all night. Well, don't get unwound. I'll be back at six for supper. Case, since you're doing the inviting, bring along that new Lieutenant Whitley. He seems a friendly sort and uh, rather lonely.
Sergeant Keel, Major. Cut out that Major stuff. Well, well, look at the flowers in May. What do you all do it up for? New issue, sir. For the entire troop, sir, from the socks up, sir. What that uniform needs is a new set of chevrons. Go down to the quartermaster and draw an issue of Sergeant Major Stripes. Sergeant Major, sir. You mean that, no. Certainly I mean it. And tell Clancy he'll be the new top king. Clancy. Thank you, sir. Uh, and Sergeant, get a nice bouquet of flowers from the Salter's wife. Flowers from me, sir? No, you idiot. They're for Miss Clemson. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, there's a couple of gentlemen outside that would like to see the ma... I mean the captain, sir. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Captain McLeod? Yes. My name's Cliff Taggart, and this is Mr. Daniel Avery, prominent Tucson businessman. Well, what can I do for you? We came to do something for you, sir. Oh, I see. Well, come on in the bedroom while I finish shaving. We won't take up more than a moment of your time, Captain. You see, we've been delegated by a group of Tucson citizens to bring you a small token of their appreciation and gratitude for your part in restoring peace and order to this region. As a matter of fact, they uh, took up a small collection. There it is, Captain. Twenty-five hundred dollars in gold. Well, I hardly know what to say, gentlemen. Well, there's no need to say anything, Captain. The people of this district are proud of you. Of course, they hope with this expression of goodwill, you'll be friendly and responsive to the popular demand in certain matters. Yeah? Such as what? Well, sir, in defiance of the people's wishes, the government has included in the Apache Reservation the Galerno Mountains with their rich mineral deposit. So now all those prospectors who really own those claims have been ordered out and their minds shut down. Yeah, I know. I chased them out. Oh, acting under orders, of course. Oh, of course. Where do I come in now? Well, that's very simple, Captain. All you have to do is keep your patrols handy to provide some protection from the Apaches while the miners go back to work. What a fine pair of mealy mouth vultures you turned out to be. I couldn't have spent the last eight years of service in Arizona without realizing that the Apache outbreaks were brought on by double-dealing whites like yourselves. Well, I'll see here. Now, Captain. get out. Get! I had to bury a lot of good men because your kind kept violating treaties. Now, watch the talk. You, Gila Dan Avery. You've been robbing our men long enough in that Tucson dive of yours. Now, wait a minute, McLeod. We I didn't heard about you two, Taggart. They tell me when you want a thing, you take it with your fists or your guns. Don't lay a hand on me, soldier. Hey, anything I can do, sir? Fall in a detail and escort these men to the gate. Yes, sir. You'll get back double for this, soldier boy. I'll be looking forward to it. Detail, halt! It's an escort detail. Fall in. Mount, peace! Lead, ho! Your flowers, sir. Thanks. You two look like you need a drink. Yeah. What happened to your eye, Cliff? I got kicked by a jackrabbit. I told you McLeod wouldn't go for it. I can see that. Threw us out of his quarters and had us drummed out of camp. Well, yeah, McLeod ain't that tough. This one, he's gonna settle with me, personal. You did fine, boys. Even better than I expected. What? Now look, Alsop, nobody makes a fool out of me. McLeod did, and it's what I'd hoped for. I want you two to see Judge Barham and swear out affidavits to everything McLeod did to you. Lay it on thick. You knew McLeod wouldn't take that bribe. You knew he'd jump it. Sure. When you're going to start a fire, you first have to light a match. You've lit the match. Now we'll let our territorial delegate in Washington start the fire. <laughs> The issue is whether our troops are in Arizona for the protection or persecution of the civilian. The presence of Geronimo and his murderous warriors is retarding the settlement of my territory. The cavalry prefers the policy of appeasement. I say this is wrong. The citizens' rights must be respected if it costs the life of every Indian in the Southwest. You're quite harsh, Mr. Thatcher. It was the Indians' land in the first place. Mr. Secretary, the Apache is a natural killer. Hardly more than a wild animal. Is he to be granted privileges and concessions that our people are not?
What does the Commissioner of Indian Affairs have to say? We have no desire to exterminate the Apache, but the action of these Indian lovers, like this uh, cavalry officer, Captain McCloud, cannot be tolerated. The people of Tucson are aroused, indignant over his mistreatment of some of their important citizens, as those affidavits will testify. Gentlemen, the War Department will take Captain McLeod's conduct under advisement immediately. Lieutenant Baker reports that all patrol camps have been established, sir. Acknowledge. Touch her off again. Ain't no engines or soldiers in sight, Biddy. No. I don't like this blasting. They can hear it for miles. Yeah, well, you let me worry about that. You get that gold vein open if it's there. She's there, all right. Her been all up wouldn't a grub stick me. Howsomever, we'll soon know. Time's up. Busted that vein wide open, two foot high she is. Looks like she runs clean around the mountain. Well, that's the richest gold quartz ever I've seen. Let's get some of them samples in the sack and get out of here. Now, wait a minute. What Alsop has in mind, it'll take more than a few samples. He said to bring several sacks. Now, get in there and dig it out. Get the sacks, Jake. Yeah. Finish him off? No, uh, bring him up here. He'll give him some of his own Apache treatment. Clint, you shouldn't have done that. It'll only make trouble. Go on, get that ore out. Get going. Game little devil, ain't he? Not a squawk out of you. You've done enough to him. Why don't you cut him loose? Get them more sacks tied up. But you're going too far! Since when did you start getting squeamish? Get busy! Should I kick the box out before we go? Oh, leave him alone. Can't stand his toes forever. Adios, papoose. Hang around. Details! Hello! Signs don't mean a thing to you, do they, Taggart? Well, we was just out for a little ride in the fresh air. Sagebrush, how'd you get tied in with this outfit? Howdy, Captain McLeod. I ain't done nothing wrong. No, except steal gold from government land. Ain't so. This claim was registered, all proper and legal-like, before you fellas give these here hills back to the engines. Captain, they got an Indian strung up over there. The rye sight's improving, Lieutenant. Let him down. I'll let him down. Next time, I'll use the edge, mister. All right, guess. Mount him up, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You too, Sagebrush. I'll have to take you in also. I tried to stop him from hurting the engine. Say, uh, you and me ought to get together sometime, soldier boy. Just the two of us. No guns or pig stickers. I'll be glad to oblige you, Taggart, when the sheriff lets you out. All right, men, mount him up. Come on, you two, what are you waiting for? Look at these burns, sir. They've been torturing him. You and Clancy take him into the agency and have those burns treated. Yes, sir. Sergeant, you and the detail will go with me to escort those men into Tucson. Yes, sir. How about it, Tubai? You'll ride with the lieutenant? It is good. I will go with him. Sure, and the boy has had a change of heart, Captain. Hey, 
Detail! Hello! What's all the ruckus, Captain? These men were trespassing on government land. Put them under arrest. All right, you men. Dismount. There's a difference of opinion about the Galerno Mountains belonging to the government or the Indians. How about that, folks? Uh, yeah, what right you got to give those gold mines to the Apaches? That gold is ours. It's wrong! I don't care whether it's wrong or right. I have orders to keep you off that reservation. Oh, Indian lover. Yeah, whose side are your horse soldiers on? I have no authority to keep anyone away from that reservation. Well, you've got authority to arrest him for torturing an Indian boy. Since when is it against the law to pay back an Apache for what they've done to the white? The captain is doing his duty, friends. We all must respect the law. If these men have done wrong, then they must be tried. You'll have to book and hold them until proper bail is furnished. What kind of a fool joke is this? Mr. Olsip is right. Get in there, gents. But me and Jake had nothing to do with that engine. It was all... Shut up! Captain, we citizens of Tucson are glad to see the cavalry so alert and quick to act in matters of injustice. There are any more incidents like this one today, I'm warning you. I'll find a way to make it a lot rougher. Twos, left, about, hello. About this bail business, I don't know what to ask you boys to put up. What would you say, Ben? Well, I'd say if each one of them was to buy you a drink over at Gila Dan's saloon, you should be satisfied. I am satisfied. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Have my horse taken care of and my luggage placed in the commanding officer's quarters. Yes. Which way is headquarters? Straight across the parade ground. I've been in the cavalry 20 years, and there's one thing I haven't been able to figure out. Why we have to do all this marching, and then plant our stern in a saddle all day long. Theo, it comes to me mind with great clarity that your ignorance is abominable. For your information, Sergeant, my father's father's father graduated cum laude from yeah. Trinity College, <laughs> Dublin. Too bad you didn't follow the family traits. Tension! Who are you? Sergeant Major Phineas T. Keogh, sir. And you? Sergeant Timothy Aloysius Clancy, sir. Is this the entire garrison? Yes, sir. All but the outpost patrol, sir. Aren't there any officers here? Oh, yes, sir. Here they come now, sir, with Major McLeod, sir. Major McLeod? Hey. Acting Major, sir. Squadron Commander McLeod at your service, sir. I'm afraid you're in for a disappointment, Captain. I'm Major Nathan Stark. My order is placing me in command of the first squadron. Welcome to Fort Steele, sir. Lieutenant Baker and Lieutenant Woodley of K Troop, sir, the present garrison. Sorry we didn't know you were coming. We'd have made things more shipshape here. Precisely, Captain. That's why I came unannounced. I like a garrison that's shipshape at all times. Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. Have the garrison ready for inspection in exactly one hour. Standing to horse, full field equipment. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll be good enough to show me to headquarters, Mr. McLeod. This way, sir. Horses and full field equipment in one hour. You heard what the Major said? Go to work. Shut out, you sons of Belial! Get to work! That's more like it. That gives us six outlying platoon camps guarding all passes to the south. And not one of those scattered outposts defensible. Should Geronimo decide to break from the reservation in force? No, sir. Sergeant Major. Yes, sir. Signal all outposts to strike camp and return to the fort at once. Yes, sir. Sir, those outposts protect the reservation from outsiders. The primary purpose of the cavalry in this territory is to protect the civilian from the Indian, not the other way around. I see. In the event of an uprising, I intend to have a strong mobile fighting unit capable of meeting force with force. Major Stark, there won't be any uprising, as long as we have patrols to keep out the white element. Mr. McLeod, apparently you're unaware that your concern for Geronimo and his savages has already cost you an immediate promotion. How is that, sir? The department does not look with favor on officers who engage in physical assaults on respectable citizens. 
You must meet those respectable citizens sometime, Major. Mr. McLeod. I mean to have a garrison I can be proud of. I'll see you at inspection. You'll serve as my adjutant until further notice. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain, if I may say so, sir. I've been in the service a long time, and of all the low-born, conniving, unfair, string-pulling I've ever seen in me time, this beats it. And after all, you've done, sir. Keo, if I ever hear of you or any of the men in this squadron saying one word against our new commanding officer, I'll string you up by your heels from the nearest tree. Yes, sir. Mr. Alsop, I'm rich. I know once you got the assayer's report, you'd see that I was telling the gospel truth about that vein all along. We never doubted you, Sagebrush. Did we, Dan? Not for a minute. <laughs> Millionaires! You and me! Millionaires, all of us! But how are we going to get back on their reservation to work the mine? Well, it's no rumor. I saw it myself. That new major at the forts pulled in all the boundary patrols. Geronimo saw it, too. I don't think he liked it. Good. There'll be no cavalry to drive us out of the Galernos now, Sergeant Brace. Sure enough. But what about the Apaches? There'll be no Apaches after the cavalry drives them back into the mountains. But the cavalry ain't going to fight them. Unless the engines go on the warpath. Oh, uh, we got that all fixed. Huh? Start a war? How? A white man is going to be murdered by the Apaches. He'll have to be revenged. The Apaches will try revenge in return. That starts it. You mean you're going to kill someone? No, sir, Mr. Alsop. I don't go for no killing. Understand you once hired out as a civilian scout. Rode with Captain McLeod's troop. Well, yes, I did. Two, three years. But a man ain't never going to die rich on what the cavalry pays. <laughs> well, what's all that got to do with us? Just thinking. Chances are the service is still in your blood. You might say things to the cavalry you shouldn't. Besides, thinking it over, Sagebrush, I'm not convinced there is enough gold in that vein for all of us. Well, Mr. Alsop, you know there is. Well, what are you talking about? When I told you a white man would be killed by the Apaches, you forgot to ask who. Who? Alsop, no. Sagebrush got his wish. He died a rich man. 718, 927, 756, 814. Hello, two by. 965. That's all of them. Taking this authority away from the agency and giving it all to the military, I don't like it. Why don't you talk to Major Stark about it? He brought the orders out. What's this? Put them inside. Os damos las gracias por haber salvado la vida de mi hijo. Jerónimo os da las gracias. My father wishes to thank the white chief who fights like Apache for saving my life. Tell him I'm proud to have been able to do so. Que está orgulloso de haberlo podido hacer. Ahora los Chiracaguas no tienen su guardia propia. Los soldados no pueden vigilar las demarcaciones. Y me temo que vientos malos 
Soplen. Soplen. But now that the Chiricahuas do not have a police of their own, and the horse soldiers no longer guard the boundaries, there is bad medicine in the wind. Tell him not to worry. The new white chief of the horse soldiers is an honorable man. The word will not be broken. Que no tema. El nuevo jefe blanco es un hombre de honor. Lo prometido se cumplirá. What's he mean? Does he trust us or doesn't he? Sure he trusts us. About as far as I can throw a buffalo. Assemble the troop, Mr. Whitley. Yes. Norma, I wish you'd give up this work of yours out here. You're thinking that with the change in policy there, there might be danger. But you saw how suspicious Geronimo was. Well, the way this Major Stark is acting, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he'd welcome an uprising. Why would he want that? Well, an excuse to, to settle the Apache problem once and for all by, by simply exterminating them. Now, the Major's no glory seeker. Well, even if you haven't always agreed with Dad and me, at least you were trying to keep the peace. Well, thanks, teacher. We'll still keep it. Case, I'm sorry about your promotion. Forget it. Higher rank only means greater responsibility. This looks like trouble. Get these people inside. Inside, all of you. Hurry, hurry. Better get your men out of here, soldier boy. This time the play's all ours. What's this all about, Taggart? Sagebrush. There's your proof. Just like I found them this morning. Murdered by Apache. And they're the ones I saw do it. in order. Come on back, he's bluffing, I tell you. At 45 degree elevation. Ready, aim, fire. What did I tell you? Cut down them engines. detail. Yes, sir. Why do you just stand there? Get busy. These, these... Yes, Mr. Whitley. We shot them down. What order would you have given? I... I guess I would have done the same, sir.
the order to fire upon these Americans? Not shocked, sir. You might say surprised. That's all, Lieutenant. Major Stark, if Captain McLeod hadn't given that order, every Apache at the agency would have been shot down. Miss Clemson, there are humane aspects to this case, certainly. But this is my responsibility. Well, I'm not condoning the way our townspeople went about this. But considering that they had the Apache murders of Sagebrush dead to rights, they were justified. Judge Barham, I'm positive two Barney's Braves did not kill Sagebrush. Cliff Taggart saw it. That's to be proved. The squadron is formed, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Anyway, now that Geronimo's on the warpath, there's nothing to be said in favor of the Apaches. Shows how little treaties mean to these devils. They had no choice. Major, we're here to represent the citizens of this territory. And we demand that Captain McCloud be held to account for this wanton attack on our people. We ask that they be turned over to the sheriff to stand trial in civil court. I cannot do that. Since when are United States cavalry officers allowed to shoot down fellow citizens in defense of savages? That will be enough. This is a military matter. However, action will have to be deferred until General Crook returns from the east. Good day, gentlemen. Lieutenant, you will relieve Captain McLeod of his saber and pistol. Am I to understand, sir, that I'm under arrest? You understand correctly. You will confine your movements to the limits of this post. Lieutenant Baker, I'm leaving K Troop to garrison the camp under your command. Yes, sir. Case, I'm so sorry. Never waste sympathy on a cavalryman, Norma. If he wasn't in trouble, he wouldn't be happy. charging into that canyon after them, sir. Indeed, Sergeant. And what would you suggest? Uh, I'd send in a platoon, sir, dismounted as skirmishers to sort of feel them out, sir. This is still the cavalry. Yes, sir. You there? Sound the charge!
soon flush those devils out. Yes, sir. On the retreat! I just want to ask you something. I've never seen the patchy arrow with markings like this one, and I thought maybe you'd know about it. Well, it's not a patchy, but just what it is, I'm not certain. Where'd you get it? It's the owl that killed Sagebrush. Killed Sagebrush? Have you shown this to Captain McCloud? I should say not. Captain McCloud doesn't think I'm very observant. I'm staying clear of him until I'm sure this means anything or not. Well, I think it does. Well, welcome to the old soldier's home. Case, look at this. What is it? It's an Arapaho arrow. Arapaho? Yeah. But they're far north from Colorado. How would Apaches come by an Arapaho arrow? Apaches? No Indian would shoot one this brittle and warped. But someone did, sir. I took that from Sagebrush's back. Say that again. If you want my opinion, sir, this whole business of Sagebrush is a frame-up. To stir up the whites and finally put those Indians on the warpath. Sagebrush used to be an old cavalry scout. He was as Indian-wise as any man in the country. Never put himself in a position to take an arrow on the back. Case, Colorado's mining country. Could that Nantagut have been up there at one time and brought this down with him? Possibly. Well, then get out and prove it. You could clear yourself. Get out? You forget. I'm confined to post. Case, if there were a wall a hundred feet high around this place, you'd find a way out. Now, don't say things like that in front of the lieutenant. He's officer of the day. He'll be putting a double guard on me. Oh, no, sir. I know you wouldn't ever I break a rest. I don't care, Case. You just can't stand here. <laughs> When you get all steamed up like that, you're the prettiest girl in the world. Isn't she, Mr. Whitley? Uh, yes, sir. I mean... Captain, a rider just got through from Major Stark's squadron. He's in trouble. Snake Canyon. Geronimo's got him cut off. What? He wants reinforcements, but I only have one garrison troop. What should I do? Mr. Baker, I'm a prisoner. You're in command. When they put that bar on your shoulder, they figured you could make decisions. So make them. I suppose I could send a platoon. Wouldn't that be what Geronimo would want? Then he could attack the fort. Mr. Whitley, in spite of my many misgivings, there's hope you'll turn out to be an officer yet. I'll send a message to Fort Bowie. Come along, Whitley. This would mean even more than clearing yourself, Case. You're the only man in the world Geronimo trusts. If, if you could only prove to him that he was tricked into this war, then he might listen to reason. Maybe. But Major Stark's handling it his way. Those people out there are your friends. You must care. Of course I do. But I care about myself, too. I move off this post and I hang another charge against me. So you're not going to do anything? Certainly I am. Swat mosquitoes. Coffee, Major. Thank you, Sergeant. Afraid this will be the last of it, sir. 
I have to save the rest of the water for the horses. Sergeant, what are those devils waiting for? Why don't they finish us off tonight? It's part of their religion, sir. Their war god sleeps all night. They want him to see them when they're fighting or dying. It's a sure ticket to heaven, sir. We'll try to oblige as many of them as we can. you were under arrest. Uh-huh. Sit down, Avery. Let's have a little powwow. This is the kind of whiskey you sell in your saloon? Yeah, but... Have a drink. I don't want one. Drink it! Drink it all! They say liquor loosens the tongue. Have some more. Drink it. You're teamed up with Taggart in this gold mining grab. I know that. Either of you ever been in Colorado? Not me. Why? I'll ask the questions. What about Taggart? I don't know. Where is he? I don't know. Have some more. A nice big one. You're in high health compared to what you're going to be if you don't start talking. Now throw it down. <coughs> Tell me if Taggart's ever been up around the Arapaho country. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But leave me alone. I'm sick, I tell you. Where does he live? Where does he live when he's in town? Go away. Where does he live? Across the hall. But he ain't there. He's up there. He's there. Alsop, 
Avery. The drunk. That troop of McLeod. He's after Taggart. And there's something else, too. What? What's he after? I'm, I'm not sure. Come on, man, speak up. What'd you tell McLeod? I, uh... uh Avery just can't handle his own cougar juice, I guess. For a man who's broken a rest, you've got nerve coming here. Who killed Sagebrush? Apaches killed Sagebrush. With an Arapaho arrow so dry the shaft was warped. Taggart was once up in the country where they make these things. I wouldn't know what you're driving at. I don't know anything about Taggart. Except that he and Avery are your partners. And you're the one back of this whole scheme to roust out Geronimo. All right, McLeod. I'm in the mining business. And now that the opportunity has come up to reopen the gold fields, I've helped to do it. What about Taggart and the massacre that made the opportunity? If Taggart is guilty of any conspiracy, I know nothing about it. That's all I can tell you. Now get out of here. And you've never seen Taggart with a narrow mark like this in his possession? No. Straighten up or I'll let you have it. Why, you lying hypocrite. Listen, McLeod, we're joining a cavalry in Snake Canyon. You can do your talking to Major Stark. Now move. Taggart. Now do what I tell you, slowly. Pull your gun with your fingertips and drop it. Now kick it down to me. Gotta cut me down without a chance, hey, soldier boy? I've a mind to, but you're no good to be dead. Davis from Fort Steele, sir. Message from Lieutenant Baker, sir. K Troop. We'll be here by morning. Good man. Get him attended to, Sergeant. Yes, sir. One sound and the Apaches will have your scalp. Fire! 
Captain, sir. Where's the Major? Over there, sir. Keep this man under guard and bring him along. What are you doing here, Mr. McLeod? And how did you get off the post? I had to beat up a second lieutenant to do it, sir. That young Mr. Whitley is a tough man. It's for the breach of discipline. He got into a rough spot, Major. And I know of only one answer to it. For me to get to Geronimo. I'm afraid it's too late to avail ourselves of your remarkable friendship with our enemy, Mr. McLeod. Not if I can get up there by daylight and tell him how he was tricked into this warpath. Tricked? That's right. Tell him, Taggart. I got nothing to tell. All right, then get out of camp. This man shot Ben Alsop. He also killed Sagebrush. Is that true? Yeah. Have him write it down, Sergeant, and sign it. Yes, sir. I'll be leaving as soon as it's daylight. If you do get to Geronimo, what inducement could you offer him? That he and all his warriors be allowed to return to the reservation without reprisal. And if you fail? You've lost a lot of men already, Major. One more won't matter. If Geronimo agrees to treaty talk, I'll arrange a meeting at the mouth of the canyon. I'll signal from the rim. You'll come under a flag of truce, but only with your officers, no troops. I wish you luck. But, sir, you didn't tell him about... Precisely, Lieutenant. His powwow with Geronimo may give us the extra hour we need. Good job, McLeod. Se te dimos un amigo a yourself. Pretend, sir. Much obliged, little chief. You should not have come. For me, they would have put you to the fire. You're not joking. My father is very angry. Dubai. Marchate. Wait, Dubai. Tell your father I've come as an old friend. I wish to make talk of peace. Dice que ha venido como viejo amigo y quiere hablar de paz. ¿Cómo es posible hablar de paz cuando el hombre blanco no ha cumplido sus promesas? There can be no peace when the white man breaks the promises he has made. Read this. The words of the one who is to blame that there is war. There were three evil men who betrayed both the whites and the Indians. They have been caught and punished. El nuevo jefe blanco dice la verdad. Tres hombres malvados son los causantes de los nuestros y han sido castigados. No puedo creer en este papel, pero sí creo en vuestra palabra, aunque eso ya no es suficiente. I cannot believe the paper. I can believe your word, but now that is not enough. Then go with me to meet with Major Stark. He himself will do all that I have promised. Entonces venid conmigo a ver al Comandante Stark. Él cumplirá lo que he prometido. Have the horses brought, Sergeant? Yes, sir. A heliograph message, sir. A garrison relief troop reached Fort Steele last night. Lieutenant Baker's on his way here now with K Troop. Did they say how soon? No, sir. Very well. We'll still have to meet Geronimo since McLeod's with him. Of course, Lieutenant. I want to meet Geronimo more than ever now. Forward! Oh! Stark, this is my friend Geronimo. 
head chief of all the combined Apache tribes. Of all the Cherokees, the Mescaleros, and the White Mountains. You make them sound like royalty. In their own way, they are, sir. You want your approval of his terms. His terms? I want to hear from you all the things I've promised. Tell him to lay down his arms. Then we will lay down our arms. Then his people are free to go back to the reservation and live as they did. Dígales que dejen sus armas. Nosotros dejaremos las nuestras. Prueban su reservación en paz como hasta ahora. Aceptaré. Siempre y cuando el jefe de los militares haga juramento que el nuevo tratado no será violado. I will agree. Only the chief of the horse soldiers will swear an oath. The new treaty will be kept. Major Stark will keep the treaty. Comandante hará que se cumpla. Quiero que lo haga ahora. I must hear the oath now. Mr. McLeod has spoken. Even though Geronimo doesn't understand English, he wants you to speak the promise. I'm sorry. I cannot give that promise. Tú le quieres hacer. What's the meaning of this? The treaty and there'll be no treaty. Geronimo and his chiefs are going to prison in Florida. You ought to feel pretty good, Major Stark. Your strategy and the way you settle this Indian business is to be highly congratulated. Yes, I wish to add my congratulations also on the way the Major caught the Apaches. By the way, Mr. Stark, I have orders here for your transfer back to Fort Myer, Virginia. Major McLeod will be the new squadron commander here at Fort Steele. Sorry, sir. I'll be unable to accept the post. I don't understand. Over in the prison compound is an old warrior who now has life imprisonment instead of peace. It was not my wish. And I'll never cease trying to have the situation rectified. We think it's best now, are we? And it is a victory to catch your own Victory with dishonor. And I want no part of it. I know how you feel about me, McLeod. But would it make a difference if I told you that I came out here with orders to capture Geronimo at any cost? That his surrender had to be unconditional? It would make no difference whatsoever, Major. My resignation from service, sir. No me importa donde me lleven. Me es indiferente. Ya soy viejo y me siento cansado. Pero sí me importa mucho que nuestra despedida sea cordial y amistosa. Where they take me, I do not know or care. It matters little, for I am old and tired. But it matters much that our parting should be in friendship. The chief's words lift a great weight, but the dishonor is still there even though it's not of my making. Las palabras del jefe son para mí gran alivio. Aunque yo no sea el culpable de esta deshonra. Tomad vuestra espada, guardadla bien. Mi gente la venera como la única que un hombre blanco ofreció en defensa de ellos. Pick up your sword, keep it. My people honored as the only one raised in their defense by the white man. Are you Mr. Whitley, why are you moping in the background like a second lieutenant? I am one, sir. No longer. You've been recommended to grade a first lieutenant. Since when? I'm on my way to do it now. You're not quitting then. Okay. Easy! That's great! I, I mean, thank you, sir. Well, I guess you two want to be alone. What do you mean? Sergeant Keel? Yes, sir? Get me a bouquet of flowers. A big bouquet. And meet us at the chaplain's quarters. Yes, sir. Miss Clemson, you will please come to attention and salute. Flower pots and petunias. Sergeant. What is it now? Is that where you got shot by the arrow? Indeed it is. 
Hey, you blasted coward. Coward it is, huh? Well, let me tell you something, man. I've been out in the wild and woolly west for 20 years now. And let me straighten you out, but I've been dependent on the country. And don't you be talking to a man.